Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is well and safe. Uh, thank you for joining us today for another Vita Learning Webinar. I'm Jim McGuire. I'm going to host and also uh, go over the uh, complementing visual shade taking with an electronic eye. Uh, today, we're going to go over the, uh, the program, talk about shade, talk about the uh, electronic shade device called the Easy Shade. Everyone's phone is going to be on uh, mute. Uh, if you have a question, there is a question box on the right-hand side of your uh, panel. Yeah, go ahead and type in the questions, and then when I see them, I'll either answer them at that time or at the end, we will have a Q&A session. So uh, again, type in your questions as we go through the program. I'll stop and go uh, along with your questions, but at the very end, we will also uh, go over questions that you may have. Now, the workshop itself is always recorded, and we have these posted on our VITA website and VITA North America website. We have uh, lots of videos. We have lots of webinars that are already pre-recorded. Uh, you can view those as well. So if I say something that you're not sure of or that you want to revisit, uh, you know, come back to the website. Uh, look on our YouTube, North America YouTube channel and you'll find all this uh, video and so forth, as, long, as well as this webinar. Now, the CE component, everybody asks, so if everyone hears me, at the end of the program, uh, you will receive an email. All of you that are registered, you'll receive an email that uh, asks you about CE, and then you'll have to fill that out and then return that. That's gonna be from the uh, Vita North America Education um, department so make sure that your browser that you're you're opening it up that it doesn't go into junk mail and so forth uh, as I mentioned all everything's going to be on the social media site everything nowadays because of COVID everything is recorded everything is uh, uh, shown again and again uh, in the uh, uh, social world uh, so you can visit us on many social platforms LinkedIn YouTube uh, Instagram, and then, of course, Facebook as well. Uh, the program itself, um, you know, perfect match, complementing visual shade taking with electronic eye. Before I get going, uh, I do, just in case you want CE, if you're a dentist, just to uh, follow some regulations of the ADA, uh, I do have a conflict of interest. I do am a full-time employee at here at Vita North America. My programs are generally uh, non-commercialized. They're more of education. Um, however, you know, we use the examples of uh, specific products, of course, during the webinar to make uh, points of illustration and so forth. Now, most of you in COVID, you know, may, maybe many of you started printing, uh, printing face shields, other things like that. Vita, you know, had the same issue. We, we had COVID uh, in Germany at the factory, right? So we have to look at other areas that maybe we can uh, you know, sell. So, you know, here's a couple of the different uh, variations of the products that we thought of, and especially the last one, which is uh, the Vita sardines, uh, you know, in the wine sauce. So, so bear with me. Uh, we're going to get going. Uh, and let's talk about shade. So I'm going to give you a little history, and then we'll get into the electronic shade taking. Back in 1924, when the world was making dentures only, really, uh, they also made uh, ceramic denture teeth. And back in 1924, prior to Vita, there existed a doctor that was making his own teeth. He formed uh, an alliance with uh, Vita Zahn Fabric uh, that to produce his uh, shade tabs and the colors. And at that time, we only made ceramic uh, materials, and we also sold only ceramic teeth, right? So during that time, there was limited knowledge about the science and color and so forth. So this Dr. Hildebrandt just selected arbitrary shades that he found most common and visually at the time, what could be reproduced. Remember the day of um, ISO, you know, international standards of colors and things like that didn't exist. Same with uh, pigments and materials, right? Back in the 1920s, there was all sorts of toxic type metallic um, 
uh, oxides that were used in the fabrication of, of materials and so forth. We don't use that anymore. However, the shading itself has continued to this day uh, through the ceramic teeth into the 1940s. These just kind of shows you, illustrates all the different uh, types of Vita shade guides that were out there. And then back in the uh, 1950s, that's when we start seeing the um, the evolution of what we commonly know as the Vita Classical A1 to D4 shades. But you'll notice back in the 1950s, uh, there was still a couple uh, shade tabs that were missing, right? They had them all lined up. They used the same colors from the 1920s. They just rearranged them, confined themselves to 16 colors. Uh, in this case, in the 1950s, there were 14. Uh, there was no A3.5. There was no B1. Nobody had bright teeth there. We didn't weren't cosmetic, uh, you know, aesthetics to it as we are today. Nowadays, we don't see a lot of uh, B1 so much. Now we see bleaching, right? Uh, but that was, uh, you know, again, an evolution that continued. Uh, using the same shade tabs, we finally produced the uh, additional two shades, completed the AD uh, A to through D shade uh, system. Uh, did some different iterations. All of these that you see on the on the screen now, the shade tabs themselves are autoclavable, but the the holder itself was not. You can't autoclave that, but everything could be disinfected. But now it brings it us up to today, 2017. They re released a a new Vita Classical A1 through D4 shade with the um, option of uh, also a bleach shade clip. But the main point on this is that even today, the classical shades, those shades represent ceramic colors that were used back in the 1920s. So again, it was a material that was used at the time. There was no scientific knowledge, uh, you know, uh, knowledge back then about there was on color, right, Munzel and others. Uh, but nothing really uh, conformed for, dent for dental teeth, dental space of natural tooth colors. So around 1991, they started uh, looking into this. What really are the natural tooth colors uh, that are visible to the human eye? And they started doing a survey. They did over 100 um, patients. They looked, they evaluated, and this is worldwide. And they actually found that there was a certain segment within the, all the, the colors that we see, there is a certain oval shaped segment between the red and the yellow spectrum on hue and orange right in the middle, that, that all the natural tooth colors reside in, okay? So they started looking at color and color is a component of value, chroma and hue or lightness, the green red angle and the blue yellow angle, RGB type stuff. And they could actually coordinate each specific shade tab and fit within this little sphere here. So color itself can be broken down to value, chroma and hue and natural teeth fit within specific ranges on each of those levels. So obviously we don't see green teeth. Uh, so, you know, green is not part of the actual uh, two shade complements. So what we did is look at all these numbers, these statistics. We looked at the what we call color coordinates of each tooth area and then also the each classic shade tab that gave us a specific number for value, chroma, and hue. The L is for value or brightness. The C is for chroma. The H is for hue or color, right? And then we plotted them out. We actually plotted out each classic shade tab within the realm of natural color of teeth. And you can see here that when you look at A2, that's the bubble of what an A2 represents. Remember, back in the day, the yardstick of measuring what the gold standard of maybe an A1, A2, eventually B1, and so forth, it was kind of a large target. Now, 
throughout the years, we've kind of refined that to narrow it down as much as we can. But the A2 represents an area within the color, natural color world of value, chroma, and hue. And the specific kind of the gold standard of what exactly an A2 is, well, it's got a coordinate there. So everything's based around these bubbles of shade. So if you're looking at the, these bubbles in the color space, how far can we perceive, right? The issue with shade taking and shade management, and also on the bench, right? This is uh, going over for clinical and laboratory. We are both involved with this type of uh, shade um, refinements and, and, and shade evaluation and whether we use it a visual or we go to an electronic shade taking device. But what what can we perceive? What's acceptable? And what is the uh, uh, the numbers? How close can we get to or far farther apart? The, the two bubbles are the greater most of us can see. And there are actually some studies done, some scientific studies. Dr. Paravina did one, and you know they wanted to determine between two different colors, where's the split? 50% of the population can see the difference and 50% of the, the uh, population can't see the difference between two colors, right? And then how does that relate to the shade that we take, specifically like shade guides, shade tabs? If you were to look at all of the 16 classical shade guides, put them in that envelope of uh, oval-shaped envelope, you will find that um, they're kind of confined. They're kind of grouped in together. Uh, there's a lot of open space within that natural tooth realm that we have to um, look at and evaluate and determine, well, how do we find a tooth shade if, say, the classical shade system doesn't, doesn't match that outstanding natural tooth color of that specific patient? So there's various things we can do, right? We can reorder the, uh, the the shade guide. We can go from brightest to darkest. We can go to uh, group them ourselves visually. Uh, so there's many ways we can rearrange these shade tabs in a classical system. So they they are more linear, more uh, more scientifically based, if you will. But again, these are all 1920 colors. And if you ask yourself whether you're a laboratory or a dentist, in your office or in the laboratory, how many of the 16 different classic shade colors are actually prescribed by your office or you receive from a specific office? Generally speaking, that's three to five only. So, you know, there are some cases that maybe you want to, if you're gonna stick with three to five colors only, then do yourself a favor, maybe eliminate all the extra shade tabs out of that uh, shade guide and just work with what you normally prescribe. You know, make your life easier, if you will. So as soon as my computer unfreezes, there we go. So this was uh, very interesting and it kind of bared out what uh, Vita knew um, as well. Uh, a few years ago back, you know, 2018, presented by Dr. Mike Detol, I was watching uh, at one of the denture symposium. He presented some numbers that came from Glidewell Industries. You know, they accumulated all their prescriptions from dentists. And you're looking at over 4 million uh, prescriptions that they did in evaluation. What was the number one shade prescribed? A2. A2, A2, A2. And we find this uh, true that most offices prescribe A2 first. If they want something brighter, then we go into like the bleach or the B1. So A2 is probably the most prescribed color. It's also bunched up right in the middle of the uh, sphere of color, natural tooth colors. Okay. It's in the middle of the road up on the bright side. Uh, a, A1, B1 are brighter. And then below that, you've got a conglomerate of a bunch of different shade tabs that nobody really uses that often. So you can see here where it drops from, uh, they, they're recorded 
um, you know, from A2, all of a sudden it dropped significantly down to A3 as the next, and then A1, and then B1. This might be a little bit different, like I said, because of the cosmetics today. Uh, everybody wants white, right? We don't even use bl uh, a bleach color in, in our uh, vocabulary much anymore. Um, my patient wants it white. Oh, my dentist wants it white. Um, but each each range has to have a specific designation. Ours are bleach shades uh, with a, a zero in front of them. But maybe because why we do we only get A2 most of the time. Um, you know, maybe that's because we're forcing a shade that we don't necessarily think is the closest, but it's a shade that we personally feel more comfortable in prescribing or creating. And there's still a lot of mismatch of shades, even according to the uh, research group, clinical research group, uh, you know, too dark, too bright, which is the most common, o over 50%, close to 60% of the reason that uh, the crowns are having to be remade is because they're too bright or they're too dark. So that's significant. And we got to understand that teeth are like a prism. They reflect light, they absorb light, they transmit light. And because of that, your environment is um, rife with uh, variations, environmental conditions from the w color of the wall, the color of clothes the patient's wearing, and of course, dramatically, the lighting that is in there. You really should have some D65 white light uh, that is used in your environment. And that way you can at least control the lighting conditions and so you don't have something like this uh, where that you have different uh, uh, materials uh, the tamarism right different same material but under different light conditions they are they appear to be different this is really the crux of visual shade taking the weakness of it is really our environmental um, adaptation in that environment that we take shades our individual eyes, um, you know, most of us in a clinic situation looking or, you know, evaluating a patient's tooth measurement shade, you know, we often find ourselves discussing right in front of the patient, hey, is this, should this be an A1 or does it look like a B1? Uh, no, I think it's a C1, right? So um, there's a lot of things that go on surrounding the patient that probably shouldn't uh, go on and by uh, visual shade taking that makes us a uh, little bit more in a hurry to select the shade and just push on a shade that we feel is correct, but not necessarily the correct one. And this is a good example here. You can see that uh, between B2 and A2, there is a small color um, coordinate or, or range between the two that is below that perceptibility and acceptability. So that's why we can, if 1.7, we can, half of us can perceive the, uh, the shade different from a different shade. This is 1.6. So half of the population, half the dentists that are, uh, and, and technicians, you know, I'll include myself, right, that we select a shade. If we're not sure about B2 or A2, right, it's because maybe half of us can't even tell the difference. So within the classical shade range, there's, there's quite a few of those that are below that threshold or close enough to that threshold in which we just arbitrarily decide, well, you know what, I like B because it's a little bit yellower, and so I'm going to pick B2, not necessarily A2, things like that. So, you know, scientifically speaking, we, we have to look at what we're placing, the indication, the color. If you're going to use a Vita Classical shade, no problem, right? I'm not here to tell you to use something different, but I'm going to, you know, try to explain to you that each shade guide or type of system can complement each other. If you're going to um, use a classical shade system as it comes out of the box, you know, maybe you want to range it in value uh, from brightest the darkest and if you need this uh, list uh, of these you can certainly at the end you know you can email me I'll give you my email address at the end of this webinar that you can uh, email me and I'll get you this uh, list the arrangement 
Uh, because classical was so subjective, built from the 1920 porcelain's uh, teeth, denture teeth, um, back in the 91, starting in 91, then released in 1998, we did produce what was called the Vita Tooth Guide 3D Master. That whole system, to really um, button it down, it is based on value. You take the value first, and then you go into a card, and you then just find the closest matching, visual closest matching shade tab. You pull it out, and whatever that um, classification is of a shade, 1M1, 1M2, 3M2, you just, sec you just select that, and then you take uh, write that down on the prescription. It's a very easy process. It's built around the scientific uh, knowledge of where do natural teeth fit in. They obviously fit between the yellow and the red hue spectrum. The In between that, what do you do? What, do you, what happens when you add yellow and red? Well, you get orange. Uh, and you can see here that th the, the uh, distribution of the uh, of the shades um, uh, values from this was prior to before we had bleach, but one through five, you can see the disbursement, the distribution. And at that time, when this was developed, over half of them were in the uh, three group that they found the population. The majority of teeth were in orange and M, and also in the three group. And then. Now that we're doing bleaching, you'll probably see a shift in this more towards the two or the one level. And then a subjective, hey, I want uh, white teeth. I don't want uh, uh, yellow teeth, right? So beyond, beyond that, uh, you're looking at a distribution of comparably to the classic. If you can see here, I, this is that bubble, right? This is the A2 bubble. And then if you overlay like 3D master shades, over the A2 or close to A2, when we develop the 3D master shades, those shades are more specific. They're, they have a tighter bubble, a smaller bubble. But you can see A2 compared to a 3D master shade, there are several 3D master shades that kind of fit within the realm of A2. The closest matching one to A2 is 2M2. So there are some similarities but you can see here that we defined the 3D master shades a little bit better. And this outline shows you the comparable um, uh, distribution between classical in that natural tooth range and the 3D master. So again, in the classical, you can see a lot of holes, a lot of empty space because these were um, produced back in the 1920s. The 3D master is a little bit more um, linear a little bit more scientific. So if you are a um, having any issue with shade, what I suggest now is that you have the classical. If you can't really find something uh, that you like within the classical shade, have yourself a 3D master linear guide and combine those. So if you start with say A2 was your closest classic shade, but it's not really close enough, pull out your 2M card from your linear guide. And now you can see all these twos surrounding your A2 color. Now you can get more precise. You can select a shade that is closer match to that natural tooth shade. And therefore you can um, accurately uh, prescribe a shade, and then when you get it back, you can actually uh, match it much better. So have them work together. Don't get rid of your classical shade guide. There's no reason to do that. Complement it with the 3D master shades. Hone in, you know, be more scientific approach on selecting your shades, and then prescribe what you actually is the closest, not what you perceive is the closest. So again, this is how they look apart the different shade systems, but what we can't see can be measured. So there, we do have an electronic shade taking device. It's called the Easy Shade 5. This device will actually find a area in the white, you know, a non-physical color space of a shade tab, and it will tell you 
which is closest? Is it a classic shade color or is it a Reedy Master Shade? And it gives you color coordinates, just like the traffic light, right? Green means go the best, yellow means caution, it may not be the, the closest match. And then red means, hey, if you select this shade, uh, you might be way off on your shade uh, prescription. And if we look at natural teeth, we're really looking at um, uh, polychromatic teeth. Generally not so much in the brightness level. However, in the middle third is usually brighter than the neck or the gingival third. Um, but the overall tooth is generally about the same brightness or value. But when it comes to color, which the classic shade guides are based on color, hue, not value. You can see multiple shades uh, within that single tooth. And then where do you go? Wh which one do you actually uh, select uh, when you have a, a couple of options? So you can use a, a shade taking device, electronic shade taking device in complement with your visual shade taking. These are not all exclusively uh, by themselves, right? They're not, they're tools that you can use. And let's face it, for 150 bucks, 200 bucks for a visual shade taking um, shade guide, right, approximately, we keep those for years. So, you know, the, the, if you amortize the cost of any, of a new shade guide, uh, it's minimal to all the costs that we have every day. And then we can, but we can hone in and save ourselves a lot of more trouble, a lot of remakes if we go in an electronic shade taking device. If you want to get really close uh, and really zero in on what is the shade for that patient. The 3D Master, of course, is also, I call them bingo shades, but you know, you can produce, you can mix and match on porcelain side. If it's a layered porcelain, you can match uh, just about every shade uh, using the porcelain mixtures. Now, the Easy Shade itself, you know, that was designed specifically to help aid um, in offices and laboratories that may or may not have any, be having issues, remakes uh, that are costing a lot, of, a lot of money. So let's take a look at some of these tools that we have, and I'll, I'll go over it. If we can, let's see, I will, um, give me a second, I'm going to, convert to my camera and let's see there I am we will move to our overhead so I kind of went over the classical right the classical everything's autoclavable now comes in the package the A's B's C's and D's and so forth Got you have an option of a of the bleach shades because now everything's bleach, of course. You can uh, take that, you can rearrange it from brightest to darkest, which is probably the best way uh, to take shades. You can arrange it the way you see fit. So you can have something like this, right? You can make that so that grouping of what you visually uh, see within these shade guides, right? And usually this group, although there are some anomalies, right? We can all we can all say, hey, maybe this one is a little bit grayer, browner than the rest of them. So you know you can arrange this, pull that one out, put it maybe in a different group, or even start a fourth group if you want, and then bring that to the to the patient's uh, uh, teeth, and you go from the different groups. Uh, it really will narrow down and get you closer to the right shade. If you uh, are one of those that really, out of all 16, you're only deflecting three to five shades, hey, why not just pull out all the rest of them that you do not use and just hold in there the ones that you do use? I mean, why are we fuddling around with a shade guide of 16 colors if you're 99% of the time uh, is going to either do B1, A1, A2, A3, uh, and maybe a bleach shade, right? So you can take something like that and then 
arrange it like that, pop on your, your classical shade, um, the extension with the bleach ones, and there you have it. Probably all the shades that you may need in your office. But what about when a shade is in between, right? That's when we're really looking at a class, a uh, 3D master type shade guide. This is a value card. Uh, these are all grouped from brightest to darkest. And it's a very simple fix here. You go to the mouth, you figure out which value it is. There's a number on it. If you say two, my, which is uh, close to a, a 2M2, out of a box, you pull out all of the twos. And these are arranged also at least perceived brightest to darkest. But these are all in a same value group. Believe it or not, if you, if you were to take a photograph of this and turn it black and white, all of these have the same brightness. They're all the same contrast. They're all the same gray value. And this is how another reason why we're tricked in uh, taking the wrong shade in the environment is because of the uh, conditions of the of, of the environment, the lighting and so forth. Um, so the chroma kind of gets in the way of the eye, but these are all pretty much all the same value. But same thing, you just bring this back to the patient's mouth, start at the middle. Is that does that tooth does it, is it perceived to be darker or brighter? At least then you have an ability to combine these, right? So. When things fall in between the cracks of your classical, jump to the 3D master and hone in and find the missing link to what your really real shade is. So again, they, they complement each other. They're not individual tools and so forth. So what do we do about um, bleaching and so forth? Well, actually we have a, a, a bleach guide here. It ties into the electronic shade taking device, the EDU shade. They're numbering. This is the only place that this is specifically not to take shades, but it is a tracking, a bleach tracking uh, tool so that you can visually show your patient where they're at on bleaching. And this happens to be the, uh, the easy shade guide here. As soon as I plug it in, I can bring it around here. So this is the base right here. This is a, a charger base. And then if you notice right in here, there is a um, an actual uh, block of shade. It's a CAD CAM block. It's like a Mark II block uh, in our product range. But this is a ceramic block that to calibrate the device. And there is a sleeve, an infection control shield that is popped on the nose, is just placed onto the uh, the cradle. It has induction charging. Uh, and then I'll just touch the button once. It calibrates. And from that point on, it is ready to go. Now this is uh, ran by um, two batteries. They're specialized batteries, but you know they last for years. So if you um, uh, want to, if you ever need to exchange it, this red, Sleeve is pulled off, there's the batteries, and you can replace those. But after you calibrate, it comes up to a screen that looks like this. And this screen allows you to take different shade measurements. This top one here, all these pinks, uh, reddish, those are all for natural tooth shade measurement. The difference is, is that this top one, only when you touch it, it will only measure a specific single spot of a uh, a tooth. So if you place it against the, the face of the tooth, you just push the button once and it will measure it. So if we take a measurement here, if that happens to be a, a patient's tooth, place it against it, push the button once, it lights up. And this is a white light, so the white light goes into the tooth structure, it bounces back, and it, since color is based on um, the spectrum, it will then register what that tooth, what it thinks it is, and preside, uh, um, it will uh, measure 
and then it'll display the closest matching shade in both classical and 3D master. Remember those color coordinates we were talking about? You can more, if those of you that are really into the easy shade, you push that tab and there's those LCH numbers. Also up here, if you can see up here, there's A1, D2, and B2. What that tells me is that that single two that we just measured, the prominent shade is A1, but it has influences of D2 and B2. Remember that, uh, that map picture I showed where that teeth are usually polychromatic? This kind of shows what that tooth also has in it. So if you move the probe tip just slightly to the left or the right, up, down, cervically, and sizal from the original spot, all of a sudden it may say D2 because in that spot it is predominantly a D2 shade. How do we get around that if you find that? Well, we can uh, go to the next one, which is the average mode. And that allows you to take up to 30 measurements uh, across the face of the of the tooth. So if I take a couple of measurements, what it does is it crunches those um, coordinates, shade color coordinates, and it will provide me with an average. Oh, this is uh, showing me I have to calibrate real quick, push it on, it's recalibrated. I go back to that, uh, go back to that tab. Let me retake a couple measurements here. You know, real time stuff here. So, you know, if it happens uh, and you and you get that calibration symbol, then just recalibrate it very quick. So this is showing me now that I've taken three measurements and across the face of that tooth, and the predominant shade is A1. But if you look at here, it's yellow, and then Comparably on 3D Master, the closest, which is green, is 2L1.5. A1 in the yellow means that on a posterior, that's probably a good shade. Just, nobody's going to notice it. But on the anterior, it may be far enough away from that bubble of what A1 is that maybe the 3D Master will work better. And then on the, on the uh, classical again, it will show you, look, it's a yellow and A1. Uh, there's also B2, D2. If you look at here, the delta, this is what creates, remember that threshold of 1.7, 2.7? This is based on all that technology, all that science. So it is very close to being the green of an A1 for that tooth. It's just slightly off. It's a little bit, the value is a little bit darker compared to an A1 shade tab. The chroma is a little bit light, but not much. And the hue, the color, it's a little on the red side, but not much. So when those are added up, the value, chroma, and hue, then it spits out and tells you exactly in that color coordinate, in that bubble, where does it fall? And of course, which shade uh, system is the closest. So again, this kind of shows you how the 3D master and the classical shade, they kind of work together. What's missing on the 3D master, you can find in the classical. What's missing in the classical, you can find on the 3D master. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go to the next one here. This is just tooth areas. I can take three measurements uh, in the, uh, the cervical, the middle, the incisal, and then it will just display three different shades. So again, classical and, and uh, 3D master, cervical, middle, and incisal. Now remember the incisal is a translucency. So whenever you prescribe these numbers, same with the sh visual shade tab, when you say A2 in the incisal, that just means the A2 enamel that happens to be on that uh, uh, A2 shade tab because we don't have a translucency shade. Uh, hopefully one day we will be to, you know, we'll, we'll work on that and, and define and um, create, quantify an incisal, an enamel. 
uh, much better to a tighter uh, fit and more natural. So that's kind of how this uh, instrument works. It also allows you to take a measurement of a ceramic restoration. So you can take a ceramic restoration and you can measure it and it will again give you the closest matching uh, shape and when it does so it will give you again the closest matching shape in this case 3d master the a1 uh, the classic system the b1 is the brightest it's a pretty bright uh, crown that i measured so it goes into the bleach but you'll notice the yellow Whenever there's a yellow in this instrument, if you touch it, it actually gives you the half shade, that in-between shade. So in reality, that crown is 0.5 M1. Now, when you're doing ceramic, what you want to make sure, though, is that if you're doing ceramics with this um, instrument, clinically, your ceramic tooth is on a natural tooth. It's bonded or cemented which is fine. You're going to take the on the uh, the middle third and the facial or the uh, posterior on the facial middle third as well. If you're on QCN without the, the prep being um, on a tooth prep, the crown being on a tooth prep, you're always going to want to make a little dye that represents the color of your preparation. Because whenever you produce, whether uh, anything all ceramic, uh, whether it's porcelain, whether it's a milled out, whether it's pressed, the shade that we recognize, all of these shade tabs are made out of a metal ceramic. And if you look very closely on the side here, you can see, actually see, a little opacous area here uh, on the backing. And so this is closer to metal ceramics than all ceramics. So if you use this device to QC things and, and quality control for your uh, making sure you have the right measurement, make it, find your shade uh, of your prep, which all laboratories should receive if you're having them produce an all ceramic restoration, even a zirconia one, because a high translucent zirconia is, it will affect. And then they can make a, a, a tooth prep before they stain the, the crown. They can make the tooth prep, essentially the color, uh, to mimic the actual natural tooth. And then they can place that crown on top of it. And then they will get more of an accurate shade uh, on what that is. So that's always uh, uh, something that's very uh, helpful uh, when you're trying to figure out color and shade, you need the back and you need something inside this, these crowns to actually accurately measure it. And then, of course, you got the the issue with uh, worn down shade tabs, right? These are both A1. And let's see if I can get these focused in a little bit more. So the one on the left. My left is actually uh, something, an A1 that has been sandblasted, and the one on the right-hand side is not, and the one on the left-hand side looks a little bit more paler, paler if you will. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. And get rid of my notification. But you can see the one on the left looks a little bit more brighter than the one that's glossed. And that's because you've got more reflection of light. So make sure you uh, use something like that. Uh, this is uh, it's going to sleep right now. So if you have one, just push the button. It brings it back. Uh, we can get out of any of these programs with a little X or touching the home button um, and so forth. So it's a really nifty uh, device to be used uh, as an alternative and complement uh, visual shade taking. So I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my PowerPoint here and let's see if we can 
kind of tie this up and then we'll get to your questions. So the easy shade device, it, it's, a, it's, it's a spectrophotometer scientifically made. It, it, it's a, it actually is, uh, it discludes reflective light from the surface of a tooth. It, it's more of the emittance of light, transmission light. Once it feeds the light into the tooth, it bounces back. It uses the um, RGB uh, little prisms uh, and then searches for a, um, a little um, algorithm inside of it that then will um, uh, turn up the right measurement. So it's a ni nice device, very easily used. Uh, very economically used. It'll start saving you a lot of remakes because you can hone in. You're basically taking shades at the target range. You know, the middle third is typically of a tooth is the right uh, target uh, for that base shade. When you compare it to visual, right, how does it replicate um, between visual and uh, electronic? You know, visually, again, it, it's, it's going to change depending on the environment you're taking a shade from. So. The good thing about the Easy Shade is that it's um, it's got its own light source. It's white balanced. You don't you, unless you have a direct light, operatory light onto the uh, the tooth surface. It will dis, uh, discriminate uh, any environmental light. It'll it will not influence the reading of an electronic shade taking device like the Easy Shade. So. That's for almost 100% success there. And then when we're looking at shade tabs, remember, shade tabs are not exact matches. They're approximate shades. They're a target. But when you're looking at a shade tab, it's only that middle third, really, that is the true shade. These are all hand-layered. Every um, uh, ceramic uh, Vita shade tab at least it used to be all hand layered. We're doing a little bit more automation today, but when you think about it, they're they're layered in different um, same material, but different uh, like a, a neck, a dentin material, and then a, a little bit less like a transpedentin type material, and then goes into the enamel. So they're layered. So the true spot of a shade is at the specific uh, middle third. And then don't remember, you know, don't forget to take that prep shade. If you're doing all ceramics, help your laboratory out, help them understand what that prep shade is. And when it comes to the prep shade, it has such a huge influence on the shade result that you really have to start looking at the different materials that are available out in the market. So this is just shows you, you know, to make that uh, that dye, that pseudo prep dye, that's really helpful. But different materials are going to have different translucencies, and if you're not masking out a discolored prep before, if you're a chair side dentist and you're taking shades, uh, you know, if you're not uh, coloring that out, uh, masking it, that prep, discolored prep out before you, you take your image. Or if you're not giving, conveying, uh, communicating the information to the laboratory about what that uh, prep is, you may select a certain type of material that when it comes back, it's going to be too translucent. It's going to be too opacious. It's not going to work. So depending on the case, you know, you can't make every case a success if you stick with one material only. This is a good example. This happens to be a what's, what's called an enamic ST, super translucent. These are micro veneers, almost no prep veneers. There's a small finish line that can be observed within the uh, the digital uh, readout or the laboratory with a uh, uh, conventional impression if you capture it correctly. But this material, it would not work if you didn't have this type of material because you need that dramatic translucency and the thinness. So you have to select a material that is indicated for, for your treatment plan, right? This has got a little bit of 
light cured stains to mimic a halo. But look, when it's placed, it picks up the good tooth color behind it using a clear um, bonding cement, right? You can see now the translucency that was left created by this material, the window-like and then slight halo effect that was applied as a uh, light cured stain. But you could never achieve this with selecting, say, zirconia. Uh, it's very difficult even with a uh, feldspathic porcelain because we can't get that so thin as a material like this. So we have to communicate uh, not just the base shade, also what it is that we are trying to achieve. We have a, a good tooth color prep, so therefore we can use something more translucent. Hey, we've got a very discolored uh, preparation, so therefore we have to use something that's going to mask it out, you know, possibly like a zirconia. So we have to give that information. This is just, uh, you know, common stuff, you know, that we've done for, for years in communicating the lab or between each other. Um, this, the laboratory then, if need to, to the, you know, or yourself, you can always stain stuff to make it a little bit more A, a little bit more B, or a little bit more 1M2, or a little bit more 2M2. Uh, there's stains, there's color stains, glass stains that can be applied. You can fire it quickly um, to make things more like the shade that you're you're trying to achieve because again when you select a material depending on the the end result on the thickness of that material it may be slightly too bright or it may be slightly too dark because of that underlying prep if you're going to err you're going to always want to err on the brighter side if you can't decide whether it's a uh, an a1 or a b1 B1 is slightly brighter than an A1. So select B1, and then you have an opportunity to adjust it through glass stains if needed to just gradually hone in that color that's required. So zirconia is the same thing. We think of zirconia as a monolithic, hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hide everything. Um, but it, it depends on the translucency of the zirconia. and the thickness of that final design. So if you've given them a lot of room, a lot of thickness, depending on the zirconia that's selected for the translucency level, it's gonna pretty much hide most of everything uh, of that preps is gonna give out. If not, if, you've, if it's thinner, uh, not, not prepped as much, you're not going so deep into the dentin, you know, you really need to convey that information to the laboratory. And the lab, of course, after they produce it, even yourself, don't get all excited because you're looking at something and it doesn't look exactly uh, like the shade tab. Again, different materials is gonna result in, in different shades, different thicknesses result in different shades, at least visually. So you always wanna, uh, even sort of zirconia, you always want to include some sort of a, uh, a backing before you actually start evaluating the color comparing it to a shade tab. So this shade tab, right, they're the same shade tabs. These two, the left to the right, those are just milled out zirconia. Uh, nothing inside of them. You compare it to the A1 shade tab. You can clearly see these two are slightly brighter. But once you get that uh, A1 inside the crown, inside that milled or inside that produced uh, ceramic, all ceramic restoration, then it will create the actual shade that's going to affect once you place that onto the natural tooth prep. So keep those in mind, those tips uh, in mind that you need to look at uh, the material, what's the light transmission. Does it need, require special ingredients such as zirconia to make it more high uh, fluorescence, right? You need to look at what's, what's natural. That's, that's always the goal. What is natural, the natural tooth? How do we achieve that with the material we selected, the indication? Uh, some stains and glazes, you just need have to actually glaze everything uh, just to bring back that fluorescence sometimes. 
uh, give a little color. This is a good example of manipulating the different translucencies of a particular material if you're aware of a particular um, uh, color and how it reacts at different thicknesses. You can do a case where that you have two completely different color preps, and by manipulating the the uh, say a, a, tr a translucent and a in a high translucent material, at the end result, even though they're two dissimilar preps you pr achieve pretty close to what you're looking for. So you have to all keep that in mind. Uh, same with implants, right? You got to mask out if you're going to place something over an implant abutment, a silver implant abutment. Sure, that cement is going to hide the silver, but what's going to hide the cement, the bonding cement between your materials? So sometimes you have to select a more lower translucent, a little bit more pacified material. Uh, to go over your implant abutments. And you might as well select one that has a, a material that actually has some force absorption, um, such as uh, like that enamic. So make sure you select the material by indication, same with the shade, and not by convenience of what you're used to prescribing, what, what shade you're used to selecting. That all has to be um, discussed, analyzed between yourselves and communicated between a, a clinic and a laboratory and it goes both directions, right? But with everything is correct, you're going to find that you're going to have uh, great results because everything is going to come together uh, whether you're taking a, a visual shade or a electronic shade. I don't want you to leave thinking that this has nothing to do with uh, denture teeth as well, because it, it does. Different denture teeth have different translucencies, opacities, so you have to select teeth on the patient indication. So here you can see, you know, uh, different teeth, almost the same mold, but, uh, you know, there's different texture. So depending on the texture, the gloss, that's gonna change it as well. That's another component of getting the right shade. You know, if you want that patient, if they're looking for an aged denture tooth, then you're gonna select uh, a denture tooth that is very polished and very opacified. That looks like a denture tooth. If you want something vital, more, more dynamic, more of a natural tooth, younger look, you're gonna get something that's got multifaceted uh, stippling or uh, a texture and a little bit more enamel, a little bit more opalescence and things. So shade does spill over to, uh, to dentures and then you also have your um, digital denture as well that you have to pay attention to. These are the Vigo teeth, electronic, uh, they're, they're teeth specifically designed for the digital denture. Uh, really nice teeth, look really well. Make sure you're not hanging on to those uh, shade guides that you receive during your dental days, dental school days. If any of you have these red uh, tags on your uh, shade or a shade guide or it says lumen, those are way too old. Those were at one time we did uh, stain those. So today's shade tabs are not stained. Uh, they are what they are. They, they more align with that bubble of shade. Uh, so put these in a drawer, save them for a museum, get yourself a new shade uh, guide as needed. It also, they wear down, right? We, we, especially in the lab, we throw them around, we put them in the drawer, things get bounced on them. Uh, they lose that glossiness, and then the glossiness, once it's lost, it does change the appearance of the shade. So at the end of the day, it's all about blending in, right? It's producing a product for the right shade, the right indication specific to that patient, analyzing all the components of shade taking. So remember the CE, you'll receive an email at the end of this that will provide you with uh, how to obtain your CE, uh, whether it's through NBC or Florida or you need a letter for the ADA. Uh, so please respond to that, the recordings are uh, posted on our social media site. This is a list of wherever you may be. This is a list of our, all of our North American um, sales reps that were are there to help you answer questions. Um, you can always, I can always send this later if you send me an email. 
you can visit us on a future date. We have tons of these types of webinars across the board, whether it's denture teeth, whether it's chair side uh, production, whether it's cementation, bonding, porcelain, uh, Lumax, uh, you name it. Uh, we pretty much offer all sorts of different uh, webinars. Uh, we've got plenty throughout the uh, the year. You can sign up there at the, the vitanorthamerica.com slash courses to any one of these. You can also read each one that you might be interested. Um, but I encourage you to, to join us again for, for a future webinar. The help desk here, there's Paul and myself. Uh, please give us a call. Uh, we're there to help you under any of our product ranges. Uh, so please give us a call and we'll be happy to help you out. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and feel free to uh, bring them out and go ahead and send them to me. Let me pull up the, the question list here. And we got several questions here. So let's start with this one. Um, what is the specifications of the light bulb in the shade taking room? So that is a D65 uh, is the light bulb. Uh, it's like 6,500 Kelvin. It's between 55 and 6,500 Kelvin as, as far as the temperature. But it's a D65, which is more of a white light. It's got all the, the color spectrums in that. They are a little bit more um, expensive, but they're going to do a tremendous uh, they have a tremendous value to them to get the right shade um, selection. So whether it's a clinic or your laboratory, if you're taking custom shades, you really need something. Uh, so between 5,500 and 6,500 uh, Kelvin temperature. Um, and then uh, to the light source, uh, sunlight or a mix of sunlight and moonlight. So if you're using a standard room for shading, the issue with is that if you have a room that has a window, whether you do it in the moonlight or the sunlight, you would have to take that shade every day at that specific time with the uh, conditions, um, you know, whether it's cloudy or non-cloudy. Um, otherwise, you're going to get different uh, measurements every time, especially visually. You won't electronically. But visually, you're going to take you're going to take different shades of the same person. If you took the shade early in the morning, if there's a window, or later in the afternoon, if there's a window, because that light, that environmental light, is going to change. You need a confined, uh, static, um, controlled room with the proper lighting, and that should be good. Uh, retail for the shade guide is uh, or the the easy shade. It depends on where you get it from. It's through the dealer. We sell them through the dealer. Um, uh, we sell some through the lab as well. Uh, the MRSP is around 1600 but each one of you probably have some sort of a special deal with uh, different um, uh, dealers or even ourselves. So just contact uh, you know your local rep uh, if you're if you're really interested um, in, in purchasing it. Um, you know it's only going to take three or four different shades before you um, uh, get your money back. So contact your sales rep there if you, if you need to. I brought it back on the list. We also have uh, questions that uh, regarding, again, the, uh, the shade tabs themselves are made out of a metal ceramic. It's a special uh, metal ceramic material. Uh, the, to disinfect those, you just use something that has non-harsh or, or very um, a, just a little bit of phenols, right? Phenols uh, attack the surface of the uh, shade tabs, and they will start changing the colors of the uh, the shade tabs. They'll start affecting that gloss and so forth. We recommend that you change your shade guides about every three to five years. Um, more if you you know if you're autoclaving them and you're disinfecting them every day, every day that you go to work, the same ones, um, you know, you may go through one in two, three years because if you look at it, you're going to notice that the gloss is kind of dulled out. It's a, they don't look exactly like they should. And between the laboratory and the clinic, if you have two different 
shade guides that were produced in two different times and one's worn down and one's not, you're going to be baffled on, well, I, I made it an A2, but it doesn't look like an A2 once it gets to the, the clinic. So make sure you, everyone is on the same page on this on the shade tabs, shade guides, and they're use, you're using the same one. So uh, the other thing we have, yes, the linear guide is a little bit more expensive than the original tooth guide. However, it's such more uh, functional as far as taking a shade more quickly. It's really a two-step process, that linear guide. And again, they act complementary to each other. If you're a classical shade user, continue with the classic shades. But if you're not sure of that shade, if you're um, vacillating between a, a, an A1 and an A2, an A2 or a B2, pull out your 3D master shades, that linear guide, uh, go to the uh, two group, pull that out, and then look and see which one is more closer. And then above all, if you if you really want to get uh, fine tune your shade taking and have it so that your office is up to date with uh, with the right um, digital um, pr uh, products, you know that Easy Shade uh, Five, that digital shade taking device will. Uh, Will really work well for you in every condition. Uh, now the question: Does it require a light? Uh, the Easy Shade? No. You can actually use the Easy Shade in a dark room if you want. Uh, so it, you don't even need light because it has its own self um, uh, true white light spectrum. Uh, Maintenance-wise, another question on maintenance: All you have to do is wipe it down, disinfect it. Use those infection controls. About the only really maintenance is on that uh, that little uh, calibration block. You want to take an alcohol wipe and wipe that surface off, and that will uh, provide you with the best calibration. Like anything, it, it calibrates against that block. So if that block is calibration block is dirty, it's going to drift uh, as far as the uh, uh, calibration goes. So if you feel that you, if you have one, you feel your shades are kind of uh, moving away from what you thought was accurate, uh, make sure that you wipe that down and that that when it calibrates, that tip of the of the uh, of the unit sits flush with that calibration block. Um, and and no, if you if you lose that block, uh, you'd actually have to send us that unit in, and we would have to send it to the factory because they're that specific each unit is a hundred percent calibrated with that specific block that is contained in your uh, base unit so without that uh, you, it, it, the, if there's any issue with this unit it's probably that it's too accurate and if we just sent you a different calibration block that's not tied directly to that unit's um, model number and, and the uh, serial number uh if we if we don't coordinate those calibrate those two together uh it really won't work that well so don't lose your uh your uh calibration block um i have a model previous to the easy shade is the easy shade more accurate okay so you know we, this is a fifth generation um uh easy shade easy shade five Previous to that, we had what was called the Easy Shade 4 uh, Advanced 4.0. Before that was a compact, and before that was the um, an earlier on one. From the Easy Shade 4 uh, Advanced to the Easy Shade 5, the algorithms are the same. The white light is the same. From a compact to the newer one, the Easy Shade 5, the Easy Shade 5 is a more accurate. Uh, shade taking device because of the technology with the light itself, the light source has changed dramatically over the years. So it, it wasn't until the recent version, uh, last two versions, that we were able to create a, a real white light like a D65 bulb. Um, so it depends on the generation that you have. Uh, if you have a 4.0, I wouldn't worry about it. 
unless you want to go to something that's more um, touch screen, right? The advantage of the Easy Shade 5, it's touch screen. And then the other advantage is that if we come out with any more, which we will do soon, uh, more uh, changes in the software to give you more options, your Easy Shade 5 unit will be um, will be able to be updated. The previous versions, uh, we probably may not have a uh, an update for the older versions, only because it's different technology, and uh, the Easy Shade 5 has the latest technology. Uh, the other question is, okay, well, should I use the uh, Classic versus um, the um, the three D Master again? They com. I, I want to say that they complement each other. Uh, we're not saying to get rid of Classic. We make Vita makes uh, materials in Classic and 3D Master to fill whatever gap there is. Uh, these two shade systems should work together to be able for you to be able to provide your patient with a more accurate shade selection specific to that patient. Characterization, of course, is a whole new thing. Laboratories, we, you know, we, we like to have photos that show us exactly, well, you know, when you say more yellow, if you say, well, it's A1, but more yellow, you know, we don't know what more yellow really means. So we need to have a photograph with a shade tab, and maybe it's a, a classic shade tab and a 3D master shade tab in that photo showing the little um, identity of that shade tab. Yeah? And if and again, uh, if you're not sure which shade, um, take a picture, get a tab that is the closest, and then hold next to it one that's slightly brighter. And then next to, on the other side of the uh, closest one, you want one that's a little bit darker. And that way we can actually see where it fits in within that color palette, within that shade palette and so forth. So I see we're about uh, 15 after. We got a couple more questions. Um, however, I don't wanna keep everyone uh, too long. I wanna thank everybody for joining us. Uh, again, you're gonna get um, uh, CE if you'd like, you just respond to that uh, Vita North America education. Uh, email that's going to be sent out. You can visit us for more webinars. And again, they're they're very diverse. Whether you're a dentist, a laboratory, uh, we do a lot of good um, uh, webinars and and talk about, uh, especially labs now who are, are now have access to a lot of different CAD CAM systems. Laboratories now have access to actually milling a lot of the materials that chairside dentists. Uh, exclusively had at one time. So you have the ability to actually mill feldspathic blocks, which are much stronger than a feldspathic layered ceramic. And they almost look just like it, right? So uh, again, it, it, the materials that are available to us today, uh, you know, really looking at the brighter side of, of dental technology, of the, of the dental market, we're getting closer and closer to mimicking natural teeth. There are a lot of choices out there, I understand. We even have plenty of choices ourselves. But once you start understanding that the specific material should be chosen by indication, the shade, the translucency, the opacity, based upon how thick that end result is of, of the restoration, the more you'll understand that you need to look at some of the alternative materials than you're used to. And not everything can be a zirconia crown. I know we're moving there because of the cost factor, but not everything should be a zirconia crown. Uh, so, you know, a, a um, ceramic oxide material. So, you know, sometimes you have to go more natural to make it more aesthetic and so forth. Uh, what about the stump material? We make, it's called VMLC. Um, we used to have something that was, we'd, we'd called simulate, but but really when it comes down to it, it was uh, just a name. But we have a composite, it's called VMLC. It's a uh, indirect composite. 
Uh, and that comes in a classic and a 3D master shade. So um, you can select uh, whatever the prep shade is. You can get the composite that pretty much matches it regardless which shade system you're using. Um, so that's going to sum it up, I think. Uh, the rest of these, um, you can, uh, if I didn't get to your question, go ahead and uh, you know email us. Uh, Paul or myself. Uh, let me bring back up our help desk email again. You can um, visit us, call us, uh, send us an email at help at vitanorthamerica.com. We're there to support you, there to help you. Uh, I hope you do join us for another future one. And we will, um, oh, do you need a light to cure with the material? So uh, yeah, you, you, yes and no. So if you're talking about the VMLC that I just mentioned, um, you don't always have to cure it. You can kind of just tack it down. There's an insulator or a separator that you want to put inside your crowns first and then squirt this uh, composite into it or push it in or form it in. Um, and as long as you got that separator, a nice thin film of separator, you can pull it out without um, uh, curing. But if you're going to cure it, you can tack it. You can use an operatory uh, light, or you can use a um, just a box uh, light curing light. You know, just a few minutes, just to tack it down. All it is is a quick way to evaluate um, your res all ceramic restoration. Really, prior to going at it with some stains, uh, a lot of times we find that we add too much stain nowadays on these all ceramics. Because they look so pale before, then we say, "Oh no, they got to match the shade tab." And then we add to it. Then it gets to the patient's mouth and goes onto the onto the prep, and all of a sudden it's too dark uh, because we added too much stain. So um, the this pseudo prep is just that. It's it's just to help you out address the uh, the color issues at the end result. So anyway, um, thanks everyone for joining us uh, again. Give us a call. Give us a, an email. We, we're there to help you, Paul and myself. Um, please join us again for another webinar. Uh, but this concludes another uh, Vita Learning webinar. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope um, you learned something. I do every time I do these. So I'm with you. I, I love to enjoy to learn, uh, to get educated and to listen to other people that may have something uh, that can provide me that may help my day get better. So I want everybody to be safe and enjoy yourself. And this concludes today's webinar. Thank you for joining us.